everyone. This is Anne. Today is uh, Thursday the 13th of July. I hope everybody is doing well. I am popping in for a quick update to share with you guys what I've been working on. So um, things here are good. This week's been kind of unsettled for me. We've been having some work done in the house. Um, this week was all the interior stuff. Next week will be exterior stuff. So, um, it's probably was really good. My husband was on travel this week because we've had nowhere to eat. I've been eating like standing up at the kitchen counter, eating stuff just straight out of the fridge. Um, cause we've been having our kitchen, dining room and living room, um, repainted some water damage, um, before we had our roof replaced, we had that fixed and then all that was repainted. It looks so good. Um, I may try to snap a picture of our new living room color, which I'm really happy with. I love how it turned out. It's nice and cool and soothing and goes with one of my favorite pictures we have. So I like it. We'll see. My husband isn't home yet, so I, I think it will be harder for him to adjust to than me because I was here like watching the change happen and he's been gone all week. So anyway, if I can, um, I will insert a picture at the end of this little clip um, of the living room space. So I've been working on stuff, but just in bits and pieces this week. I haven't really had a lot of like sit down and stitch time. Today was the first day I could almost like actually get here to my little corner nook because I had pictures leaning up against the wall and we had all the dining room chairs sitting in this room, which is not that big a room. Um, so you know how, how it is when you've got people in the house working, it's kind of an upset, um, upsets your schedule sort of thing. And the guys did a really great job. They were very, um, conscientious of the fact that, you know, I'm kind of tripping over them cause I'm here all day. But, um, anyway, that's done. I'm glad that it's done. It looks good. Next week, they'll, contractors are going to come and work on the retaining wall. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but at least they won't be in the house. So what I've been working on the last six days, um, I worked on my heaven and earth star weaver piece. And this is where I am currently. So this line right here was the end of page one. This line right here is the end of page two. So I'm just at the halfway mark. And you can see the, his hat is starting to appear right there. I felt really good about the progress I made on this for this six week rotation for the ivory needle challenge. Um, yeah, more blue though. I'll be excited when I get to here, like right underneath where the current confetti is living. Uh, I think his face is right about there. So I will be anxious to start on some other colors. Um, I'm working this in kind of a weird hybridized parking cross country combo. Um, just because there's so much of this that were just solid hundred stitch blocks of blue. I kind of worked back and forth. Um, you know, I do some confetti and then I do some blue. I have found that cross country is a whole lot easier if you have a gridded fabric, which this obviously is not. So um, I'm just having to kind of go slow and double check that I'm counting correctly, which is always an issue for me. Um, but I think everything's in, in place where it needs to be. So yeah, that's where we stand on that. So the next six week rotation for the challenge started today and I am working on my under the sea sow. Grab the picture of this month's block. It is this mermaid with the little fishes. And so I just put a few stitches in on this before I started recording. I didn't, I, so there's not a ton done. You guys will sort of see where I am. Uh, so those are all finished. These two blocks are finished and I'm just starting the mermaid here. So I've done these little tendrils, seaweed or whatever they are, and then I started the fish bits and this is her arm. 
So I'm going to work on that. The next six days is my focus piece for this rotation, and I'd like to get that block done. That's the goal. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, you probably have run into the Dog Days of Summer Stitch Along that's being hosted by Cross Stitch Finish Line, um, Terry and Joe, who are the moderators over in that Facebook group. I will put a link down below. So that kicks off tomorrow, and it runs the 14th through the 19th. The theme of it is the word summer. So each day you'll pick, there's a letter from the word summer that you will work on something that's themed to that letter of the alphabet. So the 14th is S for seashore. So oddly enough, I will be working on the under the sea stitch along. So that will be my project for tomorrow. Um, which I was going to work on anyway, so it all kind of works out, works out great. I like to double dip when you can do one thing for one cell and one thing for another. It's my kind of, my kind of moment. Uh, the 15th is you. So the theme for that day is umbrellas. And I am going to also put it in a few stitches on my stitching shelf because right there, is that beautiful blue parasol. Now, do not for a moment fool yourself into thinking that I will be working on this actual portion since I am way up here, but I'm gonna get it out and I am gonna stitch on it and I will put at least some stitches in on this um, for you, for Umbrella. Next up is M. Uh, so the theme for that day is to pick a design name or a designer's name that begins with M. And I am going to try to get a little bit ahead on my primitive hair um, Celtic uh, holiday festival pieces that I'm doing and work on this one right here. It's actually going to be a start for Mabon with the Great Harvest. So I will be working on that for M. Uh, on the 16th. The 17th is the second M in summer and that is stands for munchies so they're looking for something that is food themed in some way. Um, I am going to pull out my welcome autumn piece from the drawn thread because it has this pumpkin right here which is edible and I believe I believe this is supposed to represent a bushel of apples. So if that's a truth, um, e either way, it's got a pumpkin in it. Pumpkins are edible, so I'm going to go with that. And just to show you that piece, which I pulled out, this is how much I have done. So I actually have the pumpkin stitched and then the center C on that one. So I will be working on that piece on the 17th. The 18th is the letter E, which stands for eternity. So you're supposed to pick something that is taking you forever to finish. And well, it's actually not as bad as it could be. I am working on this what for what seems like forever for a three page piece. I uh, started this in April. So I'm gonna work on Star Weaver for an extra day and that will be my E piece. And then for the 19th, um, R, uh, or stitch something with a red thread. So I'm going to um, go back to this pattern. I've decided that I'm going to um, change out this colorway right here down at the bottom so it will match this one. And the color that I'm using for that is um, oxblood. And I may do, I don't know, we'll see how whether or not I want to actually change any of this. I may leave this brown, but at any rate. So I've got that to work on as my red. So that is, um, those are my plans for the Dog Days of Summer. So again, that starts the 14th and runs through the 19th. 
and I'll be continuing to work on my um, under the sea sal at the same time. So I'll work on both of those uh, pieces for each of those days. Plus I'll also work on that because I do want to stay up with keeping up with the clues on that so that I don't have any to let, I don't want any of that clue left over going into August. I want to have it done in the month of July. So that is where I stand with all of those goodies for this week. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else to tell you. I don't think so. I think that's it. This is kind of short and sweet. It's only 10, 10 and a half minutes. Go me. Um, so I will just be back with updates. I will have another update uh, that encapsulates all of that. Um, I want to thank all of you for your comments and um, questions, private messages on my previous videos. And of course, thank you for watching. Um, I greatly appreciate that. If you're a new subscriber or viewer, uh, welcome. I hope that you're finding some stuff here you enjoy. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you as well for coming back and spending some time with me. Um, I hope all of you are doing great and having a great stitchy week. So until I talk to you again, take care. Hi everyone, this is Anne. Today is uh, Tuesday, the 18th of July. I am checking in with a quick update. Um, actually, probably not so quick. I've got a bunch of stuff to talk about. So um, sit back and relax and we'll get chatting about stitching stuff. Um, I thought what I would do today is talk about not only the things that I'm working on, but some plans for the full coverage group that I'm gonna be starting and hosting on Facebook for 2018, because I've had some questions about that. And I thought I would also use this opportunity to go over um, some of my plans for next year, as well as show you guys some of the heaven and earth designs that I have stashed that I'm thinking about using, if not next year, you know, at some point, these are my things that I have purchased already. So first off, um, just a quick update, uh, because I think I wasn't quite through the end of the first six day rotation on our, the six day rotation where I was working on Star Weaver. So here he is. Um, I did get to my halfway mark, which is right there. And a little bit further because I kept on going with some of the confetti. So this is where I left this guy for this six day um, period of time that I worked on this for the ivory needle challenge. So I think I just had day six to work on this last time you guys saw it. So there it is. More blue. Um, the next six day rotation, I had my under the sea sal slated to be worked on. So I have been working on that. I have one more day, which is today to work on this. And then um, I think I will be done. I have most of the July clue finished, which is this right here. I just have back stitching left to do on that. Um, I made some changes. <coughs> Sorry, that snuck up on me. Um, what was I saying? Oh, some, some mods. I didn't like the original way that the face was charted. Let me show you the picture of the mermaid here. She has very large, bright green eye, eye shadow, eye eyes I don't know but here's what she's supposed to look like uh, I don't know it just wasn't doing it for me so I moved her to a profile so she looks more like she's talking to the fish and you can see I still need to finish back stitching her hair and this part of her tail and these fishes here need back stitch still but I think I can finish that up today and then that will the July clue will be done 
Again, I'm doing this one over one on the 25 count even weave. That was a custom, uh, custom order, I guess, from Lakeside Needlecraft, who's hosting the Sal, and the pattern is by Doreen Jones. Um, the other thing I did, which I don't know if you can see the sparkle from here, but um, you may remember the pain that these jellyfish caused me because of the DMC light effects. That was what was charted. And I had been using a petite treasure braid, um, like a blending filament, to do the seaweed. So I've got my bits hanging here, and I thought, you know what? I'm doing this over one. The blending filament's the same as one one strand of the DMC thread, which is what I'm using. So I just did that in her tail, this part right here, and kind of up here in the tail end of it. Again, I don't know if you can see it, but um, yes, that was a good choice because that was way, way easier to deal with. Um, and it still sparkles. It's almost exactly the same color. I think you'd have be hard pressed to say, yes, I used it. No, I didn't for the DMC light effect. So anyway, there is that. One more day to work on that today. Hopefully have the June or July clue done. Uh, the next thing up in my six day rotation will be six days on Village of Hawk Run Hollow. And then for the last six days of the month, I am going to be starting my Desert Garden Chatelaine, which I'm very excited about. So looking forward to that. Next, I have also been working on, since the 14th, a different project each day for the Dog Days of Summer Stitch Along in Cross Stitch Finish Line. So let me show you what I've been working on for that. Day one was S, beginning of summer. S is for seashore. I worked on my under the sea cell. Easy. D2 was U is for umbrella. And I worked on a stitching shelf. Not that you can see where the umbrella is. It's like somewhere down here-ish. There, there is a blue parasol in this pattern though. So I added a few hundred stitches of confetti, so that's where that is. And then, let's see, second, let me put this on the floor so I don't keep knocking it over. So that was for the 15th. The 16th was the first M in summer, and that was to work on either a pattern or a uh, a pattern that began with an M or designer name beginning with M. So I chose to start Mabon, which is the freebie from the Primitive Hair. I'm going to actually show you this. I don't think I showed you the completely finished version of Lamas. So um, I've got that to show you today. Um, so I started Mabon for M. And here is how far I am. Just working this on a scrap. This is actually the same fabric that I used to stitch Lamas on, so they'll be kind of sort of a set, even though I probably won't have them out at the same time. The colorway is Time Traveler that I dyed for the shop, and then um, Color and Cotton Black Current for the grapes, and then two gassed colorways for the start, oops, start of the grapevine and the grape leaf. So I made good progress on that. This is a really quick, easy little stitch, which I knew it would be. Um, looking to have this finished for the 1st of September to display, but obviously I've got plenty of time to work on that. So that was day two or day three of the dog days of summer uh, stitch along. The second M in summer was for M is for munchies. And so I opted to pull out my Drawn Thread Welcome Autumn project because of the pumpkin and the apples. Didn't get a ton done on this. It was crazy yesterday around here. We've got the outdoor contractors here 
ripping up a retaining wall and digging a trench to rerun our downspouts. More than y'all want to know, trust me. It's more than I want to know and I, I live here. And my husband's going out on travel today, so I'm trying to sneak this in. Anywho, I got the L and this little maple leaf finished. This was already done. And then I finished up the letter part of the O. I need to do the, there's a raven and some leaves in it. So that is where I am on that. So that leaves us with E and R. So today is E and I'm switching up a little bit the plans that I had that I talked to you about last, the last clip that you just watched. Um, I'm going to, since I know today is going to be crazy, lots of things going on here. Um, I'm going to substitute in just working on this is E is for eternity, taking a long time. I mean, this will be a year project since I, you just get one clue a month and I know we'll have it through till December. So comparatively speaking, taking an eternity. So I'm going to work on this today for the dog days of summer. And then to finish up the end of the, um, stitch along, I, I originally thought that I was going to convert this little section right here into red. But now that I've got the colors in this, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do it in this brown color. Oops, sorry, so you guys can actually see it. This color right here. And keep it a little more muted. So instead of working on that, I'm going to go back and work on more letters for the Welcome Sal since this is in a kind of wine red color. So I'll work on this for tomorrow for the last day of the uh, stitch along, which has been really fun. I have thoroughly enjoyed having an opportunity to, you know, pull stuff out and just, even if I just get a little bit done on it, it makes me feel like I'm working on it, which, you know, hey, gotta love it, right? Uh, so let me show you my FFO. This is this cute little Lamas pillow. If y'all have seen this, just Enjoy it a second time. Um, this was, again, a free pattern from the Primitive Hair. The uh, fabric is hand-dyed by my that I dyed myself. It's a 28-count linen in the colorway Time Traveler. The lettering is a hand-paint cotton thread from Ship's Manor that was in a stitchy box for the summer. The brown is a gassed thread that was also in the stitchy box. I don't know the name of it. And then the red here and here is oxblood from Color and Cotton. Dark Dune is the wheat itself. And the little stars and the, the sun or moon, whatever it is, um, is winter wheat from Color and Cotton. So I love how this came out. It's ready to go on my little table for August 1st. I found this great neutral scrap in my stash. So really love how that turned out. I think the colors are great. I'm glad I switched some stuff up. Um, yeah, really like that. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of admin kind of things. Um, the first of which is I was watching Leticia over at the Crafty Curator. Um, I'm, I will link her below, although I'm sure most of you have run into her either Instagram or FlossTube or wherever. Uh, and she was talking about Bev and Teddy and the fact that, you know, Bev always made such an effort to leave comments and leave positive comments and to you know, just take the time to respond to people and to interact with them and to let them know that she was thinking of them. And Letitia said something that really stuck with me, which was she hoped that she, that Bev knew how much all of us appreciated that effort and appreciated her kindness and appreciated all the comments that she left. And I'd like to think certainly that she did, but, you know, I think it's really important to recognize people um, while they're still with us 
and not take any of that for granted because you just never know. Uh, anything can happen to any of us on any given day. So I thought I would take an opportunity to say thank you to someone who um, I think she's written a comment on 98% of my Instagram posts, which I post every day, so that's quite a bit. Um, I believe she's posted on all the floss tube videos I've done. Um, and always very positive and always very, you know, kind of thumbs up, great job, you know, way to go. She does not have a floss tube channel and I actually, I have not gotten her permission to say her full name, so I will not, but um, Brenda, Brenda of the gorgeous um, 4th of July quilt that you just finished for your patriotic room, you know who you are. I want to say a, a very heartfelt thanks for, you know, commenting, watching, following me on Instagram, keeping up with all the stuff I do, all the lovely comments you've left me. You're always so kind. It just makes my day when I open up my Instagram feed and there's a comment from you and you're, you know making me feel like I'm doing a good job, making me feel like I'm making progress on stuff even when I feel like maybe I'm not. Um, so thank you, Brenda, for all that you do um, with that. Uh, please know that it's appreciated and that I value every single moment that you devote to leaving me a comment or um, you know, posting something on a floss tube post um, that I've uploaded. So. I thank you and virtual hugs to you across across the distance. Uh, so since we're also talking about thank yous, I wanted to also thank Lisa from Lisa's Stitching and Such. She has a floss tube channel. Uh, I will link it below. Um, Lisa and I, I think, are kindred spirits. I love every project she's working on she does amazing work I know I've mentioned her before so y'all can go hit her video and see what I'm talking about if you haven't already um, she kindly gifted me an early birthday present and yeah she knows she knows me it's this awesome pattern from heaven and earth designs it's the story keep pattern for the Phoenix by uh, Stephanie Law Hope that's not too glary. Let me take it out of the out of the folder. Yeah, I have become totally enraptured, and you will see this in a few minutes when I talk about my heaven and earth plans. By this artist on heaven and earth, she has so many amazing patterns, but I love this one with that sort of whirling dervish in the center and the way the fire comes up out of her hair into the into the bird. Yeah, picture is not doing it justice. I love this little one. So thank you for thinking of me, Lisa. This was a really nice surprise yesterday. I, yeah, you know this one's gonna, gonna get started on the sooner rather than later list. I just love it so much, love it. Um, Quickly, I will talk about plans. Um, well, I guess I've hit on those, right? You guys know I'm going to be working on Village of Hawkrun Hollow starting tomorrow for six days and then on to the Chatelaine. Um, and I am planning on doing kind of a vlog specifically about the Chatelaine and working through it and trying to show you guys my progress as well as, you know, uh, the different types of stitches in it and anything that's maybe confusing or not confusing about the pattern I want to try to do all of that together um, and so I my plan is to do a monthly vlog that's specifically about working on my chatelaine kind of similar to what Letitia has been doing with hers but um yeah we'll we'll forge along on that so um, I'm gonna keep running on this until my phone kicks me off and then there'll be a break and I'll restart this. I'm just, we'll see how long it lets me go today. So I had some questions about the um, 
full coverage group uh, and how that's all going to work and when it's going to start and all of that. So the details of that are I will be opening the group up the 1st of October of 2017. And so that should give everybody some time to kind of find it, get settled, get added. Um, the group will be focused on full coverage pieces, but it can be any full coverage. It doesn't have to be heaven and earth design. It can be charting creations, dimensions gold. There are some of those. Um, uh, Gecko Rouge, uh, Golden Kite, anything that is a full coverage project is fair game. It doesn't matter if it's a small piece, it can be a massive piece, full coverage. That's easy, okay? Um, the first set of challenges I'm actually going to open December 21st because we're going to have um, a whole bunch of things that are themed. These are going to not be anything you have to do. You can still be in the group if you just want to work on whatever you're working on. If you have one project and you want to work on that, great. But um, when I was talking with Terry, um, Stitching Petunia, we both thought it would be nice to have some prompts to help people stay focused and that way folks can work on things that you know you can rotate maybe through a couple different projects and have enough choices with the challenges that you could hopefully find something to work on every single month. So there's going to be two sets of quarterly challenges. The first set is going to be seasonal and I'm sorry Southern Hemisphere folks but I am going to be doing this for Northern Hemisphere seasons. So Winter will kick off December 21st, 2017. We'll run through the equinox and then we'll go to spring and then summer and then fall. So that will be those quarterly challenges. There will also be a set of quarterly challenges. So if you don't have something that's specifically seasonal, um, we're going to do four elements. So we're going to do air, water, fire, and earth. So again, those will run concurrent to the seasons, but it will be a separate challenge. You can pick anything for air. I mean, it could be anything from birds flying to a piece that has a lot of sky to fairies uh, to uh, airplanes, um, anything like that. Um, so hopefully then that theme being quarterly will help also give those folks who don't have necessarily a seasonal piece the chance to get some good time in on uh, a set of set of months but still be able to rotate through. I'm also going to set up a strictly numbers by the numbers challenge. So um, Terry has graciously said that that she will donate a prize for that thread and we'll probably have some other prizes as well as the year goes on, um, where we're just gonna say, this is the number of stitches per month. If you hit this mark throughout the course of the year, you know, every single month you do your, I think we decided, I think we decided on 1200 stitches. Is that right, Terry? I'll confirm that. I've got it written down, but I don't have it in front of me. So if you do that magic number every month for the 12 months of 2018, you will, your name will go into the drawing for a um, free chart from Charting Creations, courtesy of Terry. And um, hopefully then that, if, like, like I said, if there isn't, if one of the themes doesn't appeal to you, just get your numbers in. That's all you have to do. That's, you know, something hopefully you would be doing anyway. Um, and then each month, I'm also going to do smaller themes. There's going to be a theme every month that will be color, uh, themed and there will be a second one each month that will be uh, more thematic so for instance um, one might be flowers one might be um, fantasy one might be animals all different things so one of those a month will also have um, sort of holiday themes I'll we'll probably do a Christmas in July and we'll probably do one for Christmas and then we'll also have um, maybe Halloween month and maybe a harvest month um, and the colors will tie in with that so for instance for um, Christmas in July where there's also some maybe some patriotic themes happening in there 
will pick the color red. So I'll have all of those set up in the Facebook group. Um, you guys will have plenty of time to sort through your projects, hopefully, and plenty of time then to pick and choose what you want to work on for those full coverage um, prompts. Again, if all you want to do is just stitch on a full coverage piece, hey, that is okay too. You do not have to follow any of the challenges or any of the prompts. Um, I just thought it would be a great way for us to um, be able to maybe make a decision on what to work on if you are like me and you have a lot of projects that you want to work on. Um, so that's kind of the um, full coverage group at a high level. If you have any questions, please hit me up. I'm glad to try to answer them. Um, and again, look for that information about the group opening um, around October, on or around October 1st of 2017. So with that said, um, I wanted to share a few things with you guys about my full coverage pattern stash. So I went through and I made myself a couple of spreadsheets. The first spreadsheet is the patterns that I currently have. And I was trying to decide what I might want to start next year because I know I do want to start a few new things. And I did something that I had not really thought about. I was just looking at different things thinking, oh, I'd like, like to stitch that. And that's, that's not that big. I was really surprised. I went through and made myself a list of the stitch counts of the things I have in my stash and then figured out the total number of stitches. Now, a stitching shelf, which you guys saw that massive piece of fabric, right? That is 375,550 stitches that's a big piece. There's no way around that. One of the other pieces I was looking at starting though, I thought, oh, well, it's not very big. Yeah. 343,875 stitches. It's almost as big as a stitching shelf. Almost. Doesn't look like it in the picture, but it is. So I thought that would not be really a smart piece to start at the same time. Um, I also have one which I'll show you, which is a uh, um, the Celtic Mandala, which I really like. Again, it's almost the same size as a stitching shelf. So, while there are all kinds of crazy in the world, um, I, I'm going to try to ramp back the crazy a little bit. And I don't think that those two projects, which were on my to start list for 2017, are actually projects I'm going to start until I get a little more traction on a stitching shelf, which I adore. Every time I sit down to work on that project, I love working on it. I adore working on it. So, you know, that's something that I want to commit to doing in 2017. So full coverage group, yay for the win. So let me show you guys some of the stuff that I have picked for next year, tentatively picked for next year. So you all know a stitching shelf. I already have this started. I'm already going to be working on it. This is def this is a definite go on the list for um, next year. <clears throat> the other ones that I have on the list. Um, so this, we'll kind of work backwards on this. This gorgeous piece called Flying Wind. Yeah, that was on the list to start. That is massive. That is almost the same size as a stitching shelf. Someday I'm going to do it because, boy, I love that horse and the castle and the sun going down. But not this year. Um, the other one that is going to be definitely worked on next year is another Amy Stewart. This is her Gypsy Firefly. It's the mini. And it's got the Peddler's... Um, caravan you can't see very well but there's a little fox curled up next to the girl sitting on the steps so this is a definite for next year <clears throat> so another one that I had on the list and was like oh my goodness no can't do it is this Celtic Mandala which I love 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 it's got all of the different it's got like the solstice as well as the other it's got all eight of the festivals the celtic festivals on it it's got this gorgeous gorgeous 
Celtic cross in the center. Um, it's impossible to see on here, but there's little Celtic knotwork in these sections. There's all kinds of Celtic medallions in the outer circle. Yeah. And then it's got horses in it, right? Ooh, there. Yeah. Gonna start it? Not this year. Okay. Uh, let me go through. Oh, so we got talking about Stephanie Law um, when I showed you this new one from uh, that Lisa gifted me this story keep. And this is small enough, I may add this to my list for next year. But I found this one. She, Heaven, um, Heaven and Earth has, I think, all of her tarot card series. And this is Six of Swords. And I was going through, I think there's four pages of her artwork, which is very distinctive. And I was going, sort of scrolling through just to see if anything jumped out at me. And I kept coming back to this one, and I know part of it is the colors, but I have to read you what this is about. The Six of Swords represents a calmer time after turbulence, a period of recovery, changes coming for the better, a headstrong attempt to overcome difficulties, a turning point, light at the end of the tunnel, a passage away from danger, success after anxiety, represents travel and movement, especially across water or abroad. This in a nutshell is like my life this year. So many changes. I've got more changes coming up. We'll talk about those later. Um, good changes though. You know, change isn't always bad. And I love the group of ravens and the woman being carried on that crane in this sort of nautilus shape with the purples yeah so yes happening next year um oh and then the other one that i know for sure that i'm starting is this which way artwork by molly harrison again heaven and earth it's another mini love the colors in it love her hair love the black cat yeah love it so for those of you keeping track i have decorating the wreath the little christmas ornament which is not so little i have a stitching shelf i have the star weaver story keep which i'm hoping will be done by the time 2018 comes and i'm going to be restarting the winter's encounter um, that was the mini that i started for Stitch Mania this year, I'm going to move it on to, I did decide for sure, I'm going to move it on to um, Magic Grid. Lost, lost my words there for a minute. So right now, oh, there's one other, but wait, there's more. <clears throat> this is a quick stitch. It is called Ships and, sh Ships and Shell. I cannot say that. It's um, artwork by Josephine Wall, another heaven and earth design. Again, love those colors. I am a sucker for those grays, those purpley grays and that mauve. Yeah. <clears throat> so also going in the definite pile. Do you think that is enough to keep me busy, y'all? Yeah. I have more to choose from, so I'm just saying it doesn't... I, I could have more. Is, is where we're going with this discussion here. Um, and I'm just going to share this one with you because I picked this up at the Heaven and Earth last sale. If there is another one that is going, is going to be done, like let's say I get a wild hair and I crank through like three or four of these and I'm like, oh, well then I can have a new start. I'm going to start this one. Again, Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie Law. Autumn Foxfire. Yeah. yeah. 
So I did go ahead in preparation for that and I ordered myself a big full yard piece of the 25 count Magic Grid that I like. I'm gonna be using that for um, several of my new starts because that's what I like. So, um, yeah, that will give me, let's pretend that I'm gonna have Starweaver finished. Let's pretend that. So I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a whole lot of that's a whole lot of full coverage. Um, my my overall goal for next year is to pick something, um, and I have I have one other that I may start, but it would be later in the year. Not that that <laughs> later in the year. Like I am gonna finish all seven of the other ones, so that number eight I'll just add in because I'll have everything else finished. Um, <sighs> no. Um, Totally lost my train of thought with where I was going with that. Oh, my plan. I would like to focus on getting decorating the wreath finished. That's my oldest one. I've had it the longest. It's also the one that I have the most chance of getting done over the course of a year. So my plan for each month is to work on several of the prompts, but then also um, just pick a piece that is going to kind of be you know, I may only work on the challenge piece for one week out of the month and then work on some smaller stuff for one week out of the month and then give the piece I'm trying to get finished two weeks out of the month and see how see how that goes. I may have to up that, that amount of time if I want to get things finished, but um, at least for now, that's that's how I plan to try to get some traction on some things. Um, if I do finish the decorating the wreath, I'm, I know you all have seen it like 11 billion times, but there, I'm going to show it to you again. I'm not quite half finished. This is, this is the halfway mark. Um, but I, I'm almost done. I am making good progress on this page. I just need to finish it. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm farther along on that than I thought that I was. Well, that's that's handy. Um, anyway, that t tells you how long it's been since I worked on it. So this is going to be my focus for, focus for a finished piece um, next year. And then I have all those other fun things to work on that I will um, rotate through with less focus until I get decorating the wreath finished and then I will pick something else that will be kind of more my focus piece. And hopefully that will, you know, get a bunch of stuff done. This may wind up being more than a year project because what I've found is I really, really like working on these full coverage pieces. I know it's crazy, but it's, it, I just, I really love the art that's in them and they're all things I would want hanging on my wall. So yeah, that's where I'm going with that. So I think I've talked long enough for this little episode. I think this plus the other one will be plenty long. I will combine these two together and upload them. I will check back in with um, some progress at the, uh, like probably right before my birthday, right before I start my Chatelaine. And that'll be a shorter video and we'll go from there. So anyway, I hope you guys have been doing great. I hope you're having a great July. Uh, getting lots of stitchy time in and um, yeah, really enjoying your projects that you're working on. So I will talk to you guys again a little bit later in the month. Until then, um, be kind to yourself, be good to others. Take care.